life sciences has seen tremendous progress over the past decade due to advances in technology and greater understanding of biological processes. However, there is still a need for innovation in order to further improve our understanding of life sciences and provide solutions. To formulate new approaches and develop new biological materials, devices and diagnostic tools, there is an ongoing effort being made by biotechnology professionals. Today, we are going to meet one such person who is actively involved in promoting innovation in life sciences and healthcare by supporting translation of discoveries to application, entrepreneurship and technology development. The CEO and Director of CCAMP, Dr. Taslim Arif Sayyar. So we have with us today Dr. Taslim Arif Sayyid, Director and CEO of Center for Cellular and Molecular Platforms. Welcome Dr. Sayyid. Let's get to know a little more about you to begin with. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm delighted to join today. Uh, I'm a neuroscientist by training uh, and I am uh, intensely interested in terms of taking science and scientific impact to the next level. Uh, excitement is to look at science's potential in terms of uh, the problem solving the problems in the society and how one can take it forward. See what I can see here is it's more of an innovation ecosystem rather than just being an incubation center. Indeed. So I mean what are the aims and objectives or an idea behind uh, CCAM? Correct. So uh, CCAM was established in 2009-10 uh, and the idea at that time was uh, to set up as an enabler as a catalyst organization, you know, uh, a catalyst or enabling organization which can uh, accelerate the scientific advancements as well as innovation advancement in the field of life sciences. Uh, it's clearly an enabler, it's a clearly an ecosystem. Uh, it is more or less at the interface of academia and industry. So it is very nicely positioned to take the scientific advancement to the next level as an innovation enabler. Uh, what are the ways in which CCAMP is fostering this, uh, you know, change or change in mindset or I would say change in the ecosystem or the landscape of innovation and uh, startup culture? Correct. So I think uh, definitely in India uh, with years of investment in science and technology, there has been significant uh, uh, capabilities and expertise in early stage of scientific uh, knowledge generation. It comes from academia. And there also have been many industry which are doing very, very well. But how, however, there hasn't been uh, amazing segues and pathways that lead uh, the scientific knowledge generation from academia seamlessly to industry or through towards the innovation, mm -hmm. which can solve uh, the real problems on the ground. So what do you think was lacking or was in not way, there? Yeah, in a way, the, the right interface was lacking, uh, an interface which allows uh, a people to come together which is not taken away by either academia or not by industry an interface where both of them feel that it's of their own come together uh, come together for the excitement of science and then take it forward and that was much needed and how did CCAMP achieve that absolutely it began with positioning CCAMP as an interface between the two and CCAMP achieved it possibly by being very passionate about the the objectives of CCAMP that is you know, moving the scientific advancement to the next level, you know, taking the scientific knowledge to the next level, constantly talking to academia and helping them to understand how the science can go forward through entrepreneurship, innovation and so on, constantly talking to industry and say what amazing science which is around here and how that can be taken forward. And in between the entire new uh, narrative which has been built or other story which has been built about a deep science entrepreneurship that CCAM has done where we have allowed uh, very risky ideas from entrepreneurs who wanted to come and test their ideas. We have done it over the last 10 years. And now India's possibly one of uh, you know, possibly top most ideas in life sciences have come from CCAM. So that is really, really exciting for us to, you know, see that coming through. So, yeah, that was my, like, I was about to ask this. Have we been able to, you know, foster this, you know, innovation culture in academia and, you know, uh, research focused areas? Correct. Because, you know, all this uh, innovation usually happens with technology based or maybe so even so social based uh, startups or uh, entrepreneurs. Correct. But with academia and science, Correct. I mean, bringing in the innovation 
uh, jump start is like a, a new thing to us. Right. And in India, I think the, the bioscience or life science innovations is on the up. The trajectory is very, very exciting. Uh, one of the very important thing has to be done in any scenario when you want to really have an extra, you know, exponential uh, jump, you have to take away the fear of failure. And I think an organization which can work with innovators, inventors coming from academia or even outside and give them support and take away the fear of failure and take away the risk associated with such a risky effort. I think that is very, very important. So we had to be a, a partner with inventors in all those journeys. We had to ensure that the risks that are usually outside, uh, they are unprotected. We had to provide them the protection. We had to build the journeys together and ensure that the movement happens in the right direction. And once they shape up and they find their anchoring solid, I think they roll after that. So it requires early stage. And science per se, in the scientific movement in life sciences, because of the time it takes to move, it's risky. And the, hence, it, there is an environment, nurturing environment required, which CCAM has been able to provide by understanding science, by understanding the market, by understanding the problems, and working with government and non-government organizations. You have kind of a pole position in terms of research and development. So how do you wish to maintain that or remain ahead of the curve here? Well, that's a tricky one, and I think something that uh, uh, keeps us going as well. Uh, I think our first few years have been phenomenally, uh, we can say we are blessed and lucky that we had some great outcomes. Uh, it largely is because of the amazing uh, you know, team that we have at CCAM. All colleagues have contributed to that. But one thing when we sit back, we always think that how uh, it feels really phenomenally gratifying that some of the innovations that were built over the last 10 years, now they are saving lives. Now they're touching maternal child health, then they're touching agriculture, they're touching environment, you know, and making a difference in these fields. And something that we feel very, very uh, strongly about in terms of keeping at it is to go towards how the globally the field is moving, where are the newer uh, frontiers of the science is opening, and how we also are at it to fetch new ideas to us and then nurture them. How do we you know, attract those ideas? How do we, you know, being, you know, we are lucky to have a pole position, how that pole position allow uh, those inventors from across India to come to us and say, hey, you are the best place where I can grow my science. You are the best place I can build those innovations. I think it is a collective thing, but we really are looking at new uh, frontiers of science within life sciences, new domains, which will make a huge difference in next 10 to 20 years. We constantly assess those fields and then work on those directly uh, to ensure that we are before or ahead of the curve, or at least with them on the curve and not delayed too much. One of the factors you like mentioned for you know being ahead in the curve yeah. was the, the team. Correct. So team is definitely a very vital component. Very so how do you really manage to get the right combination for this uh, wonderful institute of yours? I think we are uh, phenomenally blessed, to be honest. We are very, very blessed to have many people who who have been trained from world class institutes for their you know you know their educational degrees and so on. And, and they have they share the similar passion of utilizing their training into building and you know enabling to build something a world class innovation environment here and they are individually driven in different fields they come from technical field they come from non technical field uh, all those are coming together uh, it is about possibly the what we can look back and say it is about we always look at uh, those uh, individuals who have this strong keenness to make contribution uh, uh, after their training. Uh, they definitely could have done so much better if they were in corporates, but I think that drive actually matters because that drive keeps us going and that drive keeps CCAM be at the top of things that it is right now. So apart from that, what strategies do you think one should adopt to remain you know, uh, at the forefront of, uh, in the area of life sciences? Well, what we attempt to do is that possibly uh, we do want to be, uh, you know, very deeply uh, involved with the uh, scientific, uh, you know, the dialogues that is happening both locally and internationally. Uh, you talk about in healthcare, if there's a lot of talk about cell therapies, we want to understand and what are the ways one do that. If you want to talk about synthetic biology and its application in agriculture and environment, we want to be on top of it. And we want to see how we can actually possibly foster and encourage the new innovations in that. Do we want to be proactive rather than re responding or reactive 
to those movements. We want to be proactively pulling those innovations and show that we can drive the thought process. We Starting a discourse. Absolutely. And then bring those guys in and then helping them forward, which is a very important component. And how do you think this biotech innovation has impacted socially as well as economically, uh, say, the, the country in terms of economies and in terms of social impact? Correct. So I think life science or bio biosciences has a f uh, actually uh, is one uh, of the very few fields which has a remarkable impact both socially and economically and something what we are seeing it very closely now. Uh, examples of innovations which are saving neonatal lives, you know, a few days after birth is a great example for any innovator to say that, you know, my innovation has saved few lives. That's great social impact. At the same time, when they go and raise $10 million and value the company at $100 million or something of that sort, that's an economic impact that they are making out of the innovation they have done. A cherry on the top. Cherry on the top, right? The same thing uh, the, the, in agri, somebody has developed capabilities to improve the uh, crop production by 30-40%. This is helping farmers now not to use the chemicals but still improve the crop. Great social impact. At the same time, now they have been uh, raising money from locally and internationally, uh, have a revenue of six to eight million dollars, valuating more than hundred million dollars. That's a economic impact, and that's the life science uh, has a, as a sector is blessed to have, where you can actually ch see the change around you, what you do, and also economically the country can benefit out of. So it's it's amazing that from that perspective. I think one can learn a great deal about, you know, life sciences, biosciences from you and your organization. So what advice would you have for the young professionals who are looking up to you or looking up to this segment huh. and want to make a career or want to, you know, go ahead in this? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's very important. So one of the thing that, uh, things that we do see is that, uh, you know, this particular entire sector uh, is amazingly uh, gratifying sector to come in. Uh, you can make differences socially and economically as well. But at the same time, uh, what uh, is important is to understand the need, right? Uh, there is a uh, usually a global view of a need, be it healthcare, agriculture, environment. But if you're building innovation, you should understand the need very, very deeply and clearly. And that could be a, a contextual local need. And then you build innovation for that. And if your understanding of the need and the innovation that or the technology that you have built, if it aligns well, the success will be yours. You have to be at it. Do not give it up. There are enough capabilities. There are enough, enough organizations who can support you. But it is you who will be able to assess and articulate the need for yourself and then build the innovation for that. So the, the times are amazingly bright for those young kids who want to build innovations in healthcare, agri or environment. Uh, you just need to be very clear. Uh, try avoiding incremental innovations because it will not take you far. Uh, be bold, take risk. Uh, there are enough places to support you if you take risk. And I think uh, the rewards can be uh, enormous if you actually can build something like that. Uh, usually the startups are like economically driven, yeah. but I mean, as you just gave examples also, Correct. they can be socially driven also. Correct. And life sciences in this case is happening also. Correct. So how do you suggest them to make, you know, the balance of, between the two? Correct. So I think as somebody said that even the, uh, you know, the, the most social effort, you have to done it so that it is sustainable. Mm -hmm. So even if you are doing it for social good, you have to build an economic mm -hmm. angle to it. So it is sustainable and it doesn't really fall off after a few effort. Uh, but if something is successful, it will have economic returns, by the way. So I think if you can actually build something that is solving somebody's problem, and if you have an angle of economics in it, I think it can, done, it can do both. And you don't need to really say, oh, no, but I do not want economic returns or the other way around. Okay, now tell us something about your journey. Sure. And what made you, you know, come into this stream and take up uh, life sciences about No, surely. So I, uh, I come from a family with my sister who, ha who was a botanist by training. And so I grew with uh, my strong, uh, you know, liking for biosciences per se. And as I grew, I took on neuroscience for my doctorate studies and postdoctorate studies at the same time. Uh, I was at UCSF uh, for my postdoctoral studies. And I got exposure through an organization called QB3 
for how scientific outcomes and discoveries can be taken to the next level and translated for applications in healthcare and otherwise. And I think that exposure in San Francisco was uh, actually game changing in my mindset that how much more can be done with science. And I was looking for an opportunity to build such capabilities and I was lucky enough to gather about the opportunity of at the time of setting up of CCAM and I got an opportunity to come and help set it up. I think that was phenomenally rewarding and uh, my uh, kudos to visionaries at that time, uh, both in DBT and locally here uh, at Bagalow Life Science Cluster, who actually thought of an organization like this, first of its kind in India, yeah. and, and you know give a chance to a youngster like me. And I think the journey has been very, very much rewarding. And I, I think with my team collectively, we all are enjoying the ride. Uh, where we can see the impact of our efforts on the ground very much both socially and economically. And what have been the challenges that you faced while, you know, while being on this journey and how you tackled them? So I think uh, challenges is a part of fun, it, uh, but they don't stay in memory. I think the fun part is the outcomes and they stay in memory. But still, nonetheless, I think the, uh, India is actually a growing trajectory and a growing ecosystem in biotech innovation. It is not a mature system. Uh, that uh, leads to a slow movement of science compared to very fast, accelerated, fast-track movement of science that happens in other developed countries. Um, and, and those have been challenges where we want to ad still address how can we fast-track the movement of early scientific ideas, early innovation ideas into innovations and not really let them take a little bit more time than they should and build on that. And that has been a bigger challenge at the systemic level and we are hoping that we can achieve it uh, with everyone's support. Where do you see CCAM a few years down the line and also the India's capabilities mm -hmm. in biotech sector down the line? Are, are we going to be one of the supreme powers in the coming years or how much time will it take as per you? So uh, I think India, you know, while we haven't been the uh, clearly the top one or top two of the scientific, uh, you know, uh, the ecosystem per se, but there have been pockets where we have done phenomenally well. Uh, the, the pharmaceutical, in terms of the generics, we have been a driver of that and we provide the world yeah. with affordable generics, affordable drugs that we do know of. Yeah. Uh, similarly, vaccines, uh, we provide the largest chunk of vaccines to the world, mm. the cost-effective vaccines, and that has been possible. So there have been pockets where we have excelled and our capabilities are supporting now supporting the world at large. I see that there are many more opportunities for India within that, uh, where we can actually be a world leader as, uh, you know, in, in five to 10 years. One would be diagnostics. Uh, you know, India has potential, and if we do well, has potential to now build molecular diagnostics for India and beyond in the same manner uh, with new diagnostics capabilities that has emerged during COVID-19 times. Another very exciting opportunity is around the corner in digital health how we'll be able to build digital health solutions which will be affordable, which will be used to strengthen the public health system, which will be important for India as well as globally. So there are several exciting opportunities, pockets which are there, and collectively then we'll make India one of the superpower in science because we'll have to focus on units and then as a one unit overall. And CCAM, you know, possibly see itself as one of the major enabler of that effort be it in diagnostics or based in digital health, CCAM wants to be driving that change that India is on to for its own good as well as the global good. So that's what CCAM's vision is. That's wonderful to know and the, the spectrum that you presented looks pretty exciting. So thank you so much for your time, uh, Dr. Taslim. And uh, I'm sure youngsters will be inspired and they will be you know, attracted and they'll understand much better the life sciences, biosciences after going through this conversation and the stories built around this. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So that was Dr. Taslim, who's driving innovation and entrepreneurship in the segment of life sciences through his organization called Center for Cellular and Molecular Platforms, which has come up as an enabler of successful bioscience research and entrepreneurship. We will be back with more such personalities who are working to make a difference. Keep watching this space. Goodbye.